This is Spotlight, a series inspired by Spin's journey of reimagining mobility in cities. Join us as we host conversations with innovators and influencers who are shaking things up. Hey, I'm Ewan. I'm the co-founder and president of Spin, an electric scooter company, and I'm pretty pleased to be sitting here with my friend uh, Justin Blau. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, and so it's uh, it's great. This is part of a new series we're, we're trying out, and we're talking to our friends in, in a network who are instigators, who are people doing kind of cool things, exciting things, and things that are changing their industry and the world uh, for the better. Um, it really, really kind of mimics the story of Spin itself. We were three software engineers who were tired of gridlock in our cities. So we decided to put a bunch of orange bicycles and the next thing you know, we, we spawned a new industry. And now here we are today, um, now part of Ford and, and growing nationwide. So um, enough about Spin, I just want to talk about uh, my, my favorite topic, which is you know electronic music and, yeah. and uh, the music industry with Justin here. Yeah, of course. It's funny. I had met Ewan a little while ago, almost over a year now we've known each other. Yeah. And Ewan had reached out on Twitter from just seeing my interest in cryptocurrencies. And I've been interested in cryptocurrencies for many years. Ewan was as well. And we mm. just connected. We had a mutual friend, the Winklevoss twins. Yeah. And we just connected through the internet. Ewan had introduced me to his whole network of tech entrepreneurs, all doing really interesting things yeah. in their field. And I've always been fascinated by tech in general and its capacity to just transform an entire industry the way that it's now transforming personal mobility. So for me, you know, learning about the entire scooter business was just kind of interesting and fascinating from the business side. I yeah. studied finance before I was a DJ, always been interested in disruptive technology. And, you know, it's so cool to have a network of friends that are all kind of doing that, you and being one of those, mm -hmm. and seeing Spin grow as quickly as it has. And obviously the Ford acquisition will, you know, put the entire brand in a whole new powerhouse of force, you know, spreading around the US. So um, I'm just excited to be a part of that and to watch it grow. And I ride my spin around yeah. my, at home in Vegas all the time. So um, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk about the, more the music industry and sure, how, yeah. how you kind of found, like, you know, what, what, what it was like when you first kind of dove in, how you, um, it's really interesting that there are parallels in tech and then music oh, yeah. as well. They were all, um, after all, it's all a business on, on both ends, different types of content, obviously, and products. But you know, what was the state of the industry when you, when you first entered the field, and, and how did you kind of get started? Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm very much a product of tech, of the tech revolution in music. Mm -hmm. I think that when I started, I was in college, I was 19, and I used the internet as a tool to spread my mashups and mixes, um, something that you know is a little you know non-traditional in terms of distribution. You needed the internet. You needed YouTube and SoundCloud and Facebook and those kind of tools to get your name out there without a big record deal. And that's kind of what had happened to me organically, where all my friends in college would just spread it around via the internet, and that's how I got my start in the first place, thanks right. to tech. Was it the era of like Napster or like a little bit past Napster, little past, like yeah. in between Napster and Spotify was this kind of era of online blogs and um, SoundCloud kind of coming up and Facebook sharing being such a powerful tool to right. spread creative, you know, any kind of creative content. Right. And I was very much birthed out of that rise of tech and entertainment. Yeah, so that helped you get your rise. I'm curious whether you've seen, I mean, have you any, observed anything about the power dynamics in the music industry that spurred, I mean, some of the, the thing that brought us together is obviously your, your project, uh, OMF, Right. And some of the things that you, initiatives that you kind of experimented with as well. What was it that you were trying to change in, in the industry? I think that, you know, being an independent artist in music is always difficult. And I've been independent for my whole career. It's been nine years. Mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, I released my own records on my own label. I had my own in-house management team for a little while. I work now with a, a couple of bigger teams, but I'm very much involved in every aspect of my career. And I prefer, prefer it to be that way, yeah. um, to maintain creative control. And I think that in general, what, what all the new tech has done to music, it, it's given artists like me more power mm -hmm. and more leverage in, in a world where, you know, the bigger guys always kind of have an advantage. And so it's nice to use technology to my advantage as an independent artist, get, getting my music out there and doing innovative, creative things with my content, with my music videos, et cetera. Right. Um, it's definitely, it's given independent artists and new artists an edge to break out where, whereas in the past they might have never had that opportunity. Mm. And I think it parallels to any startup in tech, yeah. where you're kind of disrupting an entire universe of um, something that's been around for a while, whether it be mobility or, you know, in some of our friends' case, it's sharing, mm -hmm. sharing economies yeah. and, and whatnot. And obviously, I think that, you know, it takes a certain attitude and a certain commitment to, to build anything. Um, from scratch, right? So and I think that's why we're such great yeah. friends over over the past year. How about the resistance? Like, you know, did you kind of along the way, you know, have you kind of thought twice about taking, you know, 
uh, taking your your, oh, yeah. your path in a long way, and, and you know, as opposed to a more traditional one. It's definitely harder. It's harder to be independent and, yeah. and to try to make everything work around being independent. You know, I, I think that a lot of artists are quick to sign a big deal that they complain about later, and they lose creative control. Um, and and one of my favorite projects that I've worked on over the years was my record label Bloom, mm -hmm. where we donate all the profits to different charities. DJ Justin Blau's not-for-profit record label Bloom. Do you hear me say that? Not-for-profit. The label is the first of its kind. And we've raised almost over $300,000 in the past three years for a charity called Pencils of Promise, yeah. which builds schools in developing countries. Mm -hmm. And we've also raised money for F Cancer, which is a, a cancer early detection and awareness charity. We raised money for hurricane relief in uh, Houston for Hurricane Harvey. Yeah. We've done all different types of things and, and leveraging music as a way to bring people together and to unite them around causes that mm -hmm. are really important to the community. That's something that I've always you know, wanted to be a part of my career. Right. Now, speaking of music, what do you see the music industry in the next like, you know, five, ten years? You know, you're part of this movement, a new breed of artists that are doing things on their own. You know, between the, do you see a new type of label emerging? Do you see the power dynamics kind of changing in this industry with streaming and, and other things? Yeah, I think, I mean, I, mean, I think streaming is, is a two-sided coin where now all of a sudden people are actually paying for their listening experience. For mm -hmm. such a long time, people would just find stuff on the internet, they'd share it with their friends, they wouldn't really pay for listening. Now with a small monthly membership fee, all of a sudden this m music is monetized in a completely new way and that gives independent artists more power. And so I think as, as someone who's built my career independently, I've thought about a lot of ways to help other artists build their careers independently, not taking the kind of, not signing the bad deal early right. on and, and taking steps to manage themselves and help themselves grow. I think that's the beauty of tech, tech revolution in music is artists will continue to have power and I want to be a part of that conversation somehow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've talked about a bunch yeah. of ideas, you know, instead of it being a label, creating an artist accelerator, something mm -hmm. that gives artists more resources than just marketing tools and, right. and budgets. Um, I think that's really important for the artists of the next generation and we've seen it work, you know, with artists like Lauf who um, built, you know, is completely independent mm -hmm. and built his career just on Spotify having amazing records and, you know, artists are going to need more guidance and, you know, in, in how they can use technology to benefit themselves. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for your time. Of course.